discovered the word paradigm as a teenager reading The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And I learned about the paradigm shift. For me, this was life-changing. There's no doubt about it. Because as somebody who is almost um, compulsive when it comes to being able to predict outcomes and predict solutions, it was liberating for me to find out that by adjusting my paradigm, I could adjust my life, my outcomes. How do I say this in, a, in an easier way? Paradigms are the things that control our lives. So if I shift my paradigm, automatically I'm shifting my life in the direction that I want it to go. So I became obsessed with the question, so what paradigm do I need to have to live the best life? What paradigm do I need to have to make a mark on earth, to live a legacy? And I discovered something unconsciously that became very clear to me a few years later. So we were sitting um, in a meeting in my office on my second job, talking about how to boost sales, you know, we're brainstorming about sales, how do we get more clients, and somebody made it, I mean, he stood up and made this wonderful, um, he wrote these words, these letters, he wrote W-I-I-F-M on the board, and he said, you know, with this dramatic, I want to tell everybody here, that if we are to succeed as an organization, we must know the meaning of these letters, and we must be guided by these letters. And I'm thinking, okay, let me know. And then he interpreted this to mean, what's in it for me? And his assumption or his theory was that every human being on earth is moved and motivated by this. That when you're telling anybody something, the thing they're thinking on the back of, on their side is, what is in it for me? And then the, the, the whole hall went like, wow, yes, you finally got the answer. But it didn't make sense to me. I started thinking, am I broken? Is something wrong with me? Because this is not, this is not how I analyze things. I remembered when, so his, 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 his idea was that you have to have something in it for somebody if you want them to do something for you. That's all I can say. I don't know how else to explain that. But I thought back to my university days when um, philosophy and logic in 100 level was like this very difficult course. And then at some point, I broke that philosophy and logic thing. I understood it. And because I knew how much I struggled with it, I made a, I made a personal commitment. When I was in 200 level, I organized free tutorials for the 100 level students to teach them philosophy and logic. I, had, I came up with these funny ways to help them to understand it. And I did the same thing in 300 and 400 level, but no, they didn't pay me anything. Some of them didn't even say thank you. What, do, what did they care? There was really nothing in it for me per se. So should I not have done that? So I started finding it strange that when I began to look around me, he was actually right. There's this what's in it for me mentality, but I had, I had a problem with that paradigm. So because I had been taught already that there are difference between, there's a difference between facts and paradigms, I started trying to figure out what is this other paradigm about what's in it for me, and am I losing something by not always asking myself what I stand to gain before doing things. This what's in it for me mindset, I believe has cheated us as a continent out of so many things, which I will explain very shortly. So first of all, this what's in it for me mindset expects that when I do something, I should get something in return. And it expects that when I go into a place, my eyes have to be, do not dull yourself, eh? Look and search, what can I get? What can I, uh, uh, what do you have to offer me? How much will you pay me? If I do this for you, what will you do for me in return? And it's supposed, it sounds like it is a profitable mindset, but it's actually cheating us as individuals, as a country and as a continent out of so many things because I believe very strongly that if we are to liberate ourselves and reach our full potential, we must always get into a place and ask ourselves, what can I contribute? What can I bring to the table? How can I make this better? So I first saw 
after that um, um, interaction where he was you know, so passionate about what's in it for me, it really comes from this popular saying, oh, we came to this world with nothing, and we shall live with nothing. And you know, we hear that saying when people are trying to teach you about humility, about not being materialistic. So you didn't come, you came naked, and when you die, you can take any of these things with you. So be humble. I don't agree with that mindset because I came to this world full of potential. And every human being has to have that same mindset. You have to have that same mentality so that you go into situations and you are actually going in there to change those situations. So if I say I came into this world, I began to reflect even more and say, how has this different mindset affected me in my life up to this point where this young man is saying this thing and it's becoming obvious to me. I reflected back to my previous job where we all came in as a pre-NYSC um, staff interns. And you know, the interns are the ones that do what? Buy the coffee, make the photocopies, you know, those, those jobs that nobody else wants to do. But I came from a, <laughs> a family where my mom would say, if they send you to buy rice, you buy that rice, in a way that nobody else in the world, <laughs> when, when you buy the rice, they will be like, no, 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 this girl has to do more than buy rice because nobody has ever bought rice this well in, in this universe. So whatever task you are given to do, you do it like you did it. You don't do it based on how much is going to be appreciated. You don't do it based on how much it's going to be, you're going to be paid for it. Just do it like you did it. So I did this, therefore it has to be outstanding. So I call it living inside out. Living with the knowledge and understanding of what is within you and out of respect for that that is within you, everything you do carries your name and carries your mark of excellence on it. Now, I reflected back to my first job and how even though we all came as pre-NYSC, I later found myself doing jobs that were way beyond my level, where I used to be the last person to leave the office, even though people who were earning like times 10, literally times 10 of my salary, would close at five, I would be there on weekends, I would be there on public holidays, because oh, we need to get this job done. And I wasn't being paid for it. I wasn't even being appreciated outwardly for it. Instead, I kept getting more and more work. But guess what happened? The company had a policy that youth coppers were not to be retained. It was an oil and gas firm, and that is a policy, many of them don't retain youth coppers. But when my NYC came to an end, there was not even a conversation about whether I was going to come to work the next day. My boss never even sat me down and said, so what, I, it was just obvious that of course, you are, of course you are going to be retained. Many years later, at an event like this, I was a co-speaker along with the lady who was the head of HR, back then when I was a copper. And she said, my boss, I'm not talking about my direct boss, I'm talking about like my boss's boss's boss, walked into her office and said, if you love the job, you better figure out how to retain that girl. So now it may look as if I was a fool, because when my friends were working for the 15,000 naira they were paying us as interns and going home, I was there trying to, trying to form, if I did it, it must be the best. I was there trying to form, I'm not leaving any value on the inside, I must bring it out there and express it. But at the end of the day, as I kept reflecting over my life, I found out that though the what's in it for me people think they're the ones gaining, at the end of the day, the people who are living inside out are actually the ones on an accelerated path. Now, this is the danger of what's in it for me when we look at it on a national or on a continent level. If I'm always, for me to have that mindset, I must actually believe that I am empty, that I am at a loss, and that I have nothing to offer. And as a country and as, as, as a continent, a lot of times, even though it's changing in recent times, Africa has always come to the table like the beggarly lost cousin in need of help. When we are supposed to be part of the conversation, we are supposed to be driving the conversation, This mentality creates in us such a mindset that we cannot even see what we have. I have there a picture of chewing stick, 
chewing stick. If I chewing stick, let me say one more time. That somebody has packaged, can you see it up there as organic toothbrush? It's being sold abroad by people who saw in us what we couldn't see in ourselves. But we are importing toothpicks. But we have chewing sticks. But because of the mindset that I'm empty, I'm lost, I need somebody to come and give me the value that they have, we can't see what is staring us in the face. That sponge is sold on Amazon by an organization that can't... This sponge, I'm sure you guys know this sponge now. This local sponge is a plant that they dry. And somebody came here, bought the seeds, went abroad, planted it, and started cutting it. Organic sponge. So when we don't see ourselves as somebody, as people who are full with something to bring to, to the table, we keep putting ourselves under the table for other people to create a direction for us. And that's another thing. That was in it for me mentality creates the victim mindset. Because I'm doing things because you're supposed to do something for me. Let's take a look. If you go to a Japanese restaurant to eat sushi, you order for what? Sushi. Is that an English word? No. That's the local name. And the, that's what it's called all over the world. But you see, our African foods are making it to different international menus. And the Nigerian that is putting this food on their menu will change Akara to bean cake. Will you die if you call it Akara? That is the name. Or, to, or Agbalumo Red Star Apple. It's not an apple, my dear. It is Agbalumo. Learn how to say it. So what if we, as a country, as, as individuals, as a continent, understood the fact that we have bundles upon bundles upon bundles of value to contribute to the world, to solve problems, Look at the cities that we built without technology. Why do we suddenly feel that we have nothing to offer and that we just have to wait for those with the solutions to come, I mean, come forward with them? I challenge everybody here today. We have a global problem with plastics. Plastics, single-use plastics are suffocating the world. Why can the solution to that problem not be an African solution? In fact, why can't it be a Nigerian solution? Why can't it be your solution, you and I have value that the whole world sees. And that is why even though every day another African or Nigerian or whoever takes up their bag to leave, while you are leaving, on the next plane coming back is a Chinese investor, is an American investor, is an Indian investor. What are they seeing that you are not seeing? What do they know that you don't know? The inside out paradigm says, I am enough. I am the solution. I have the solution. When I go into a place, it must be better because I was there. Not that I am going to a place to find out what will make me better or will make me richer. I don't really have anything against designer brands, but I must say, if you have the inside-out paradigm, you probably spend more on a small business near you because you know that that money you will spend is making an impact in the life of that person much more than the designer brand that we buy because we want it to add something to us, to make us, you know, give us that next level, give us that next um, level of respect or prestige. You must first, we must all first discover and value our personal power. Our power to create change and solve problems. We must respect and value that power, polish it, and most importantly, change the world with it. If 50% of Africans, of us as Nigerians, of the people in this room, can understand the fact that they are the solution, we will build the Africa of our dreams. Because we will stop selling, being sellouts, trying to grab, grab, grab. Corruption is 100% a result of the outside-in mentality. I want more. I need more. It's not my money, but I should take it for myself because I need it because I'm empty and I need this big car to fill that hole. If 50% of humans 
of us can just realize what we carried when we came to planet Earth. We would, I mean, just take a look at that. We would transform this nation beyond what even we ourselves could ever dream. So I hope that we can always ask ourselves when we go into any place. So I'm here, so what? I'm here, so what? Okay, I came to this venue today, so what? I remember asking my, my family members at the time that I think I have a problem because whenever I go for an event, I can't sit down. You will see me trying to adjust the chair. You will see me trying to, you know, sometimes I go to a church for the first time. I've never been there before. And you see me trying to help the ushers collect offering. <laughs> what they think I want to steal the offering. But just because I just have this un, unsettling desire to add value wherever I go. To chase after problems and solve them. And I believe that is a paradigm worth having. Because you cannot be satisfied and hungry at the same time. I'm not judging those who live outside, you know, like, gimme, 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 I want my, I'm not judging you. It's a paradigm and it has its own satisfactions, I guess. But then there's also the satisfaction that comes from fulfilling your potential. There's a satisfaction that comes from understanding that you are a force of nature. You are a force on this earth and any problem that comes in contact with you will be broken. And that satisfaction, nothing beats it. So I hope that with these few points of mind, I've been able to convince you and not confuse you that you are the answer, you are not the question. You are the solution, you are not the problem. Thank you very much.